T-minus 20 seconds and counting. Police are firing tear gas. We have ignition sequence start. Yeah, it means we're about to get out here in the street. 12, 11, 10. We want to choose our president because we want to take this country into the future. Lift off. Hey, this is Bryn from HuffPost Ride, and welcome to The Big Picture. In every episode of The Big Picture, we take you all over the world to step inside some of the most important stories of our time. Look around you. Explore. This is news as you've never seen before. Welcome to The Big Picture. We begin this episode in Jordan, a country in the middle of massive change and uncertainty. Jordan has nearly 10 million people living in it and is located in what is historically known as the center of civilization, the heart of the Fertile Crescent. But today, Jordan finds itself in the midst of a refugee crisis. At the heart of the crisis is the Zatari refugee camp. Zatari is one of the largest refugee camps in Europe and has over 80,000 people who live and work in this modern city, which is now, by size, the fourth largest in Jordan. It's a camp facing incredible odds and at a crossroads for the tens of thousands of people living inside. But the story in Jordan isn't only refugees. It's also the home to the spectacular ancient city of Petra and the traditional Bedouins who live around it. No one understands the balance of traditional life and city life better than Zidane, a Jordanian Bedouin living near the Petra ruins. Bedouins, they live in desert with the sheep, with the goats, with the camels. If you wake up in the morning, it's quiet. If you go to that night, a lot of stars, and you feel nature, not something like made by hand. Prophet Muhammad, he lived in desert. He go alone on the mountains, and he thinking, who made this desert? Who made this nature? He believed nobody. Now with the time coming between, they have like villages, schools, children go to school, car coming, more easy. You know, they carry uh, the water with the tank, with the uh, cars, more easy for them and transfer with the car and more faster, you know. Bedouin didn't like really the noise and didn't like somebody control them. They didn't like and rush all the time. They want to take the time, live day by day, no planning for next day. I live for today because I don't know I'm dying tomorrow. That's just with the believing, with the desert and between the city and the desert. From the desert of Jordan, we take you next on top of the world to the Arctic, where we join our friends at Greenpeace. For years, Greenpeace has been working on the front lines of a changing climate to protect the Arctic. Their work there now is more important than ever. Meet Larissa. Larissa is one of the Greenpeace activists working around the clock to save the Arctic. I'm just surrounded by pure nature and wilderness. Being this close to nature really changes you. This is the Greenpeace of Arctic Sunrise, and we're in Svalbard up in the high Arctic. Have you looked? 
at this landscape. Isn't this just amazing? Here there's no roads, no houses, no cable lines. Nowadays it's so rare to find landscapes that are really undisturbed by humans. The Arctic Ocean has been covered by sea ice for thousands of years. It's only in the past few decades that that has changed dramatically. It's because of climate change that the Arctic sea ice is melting very rapidly. So far, the region has really been protected by the sea ice, but now that it's melting, oil companies and industrial fishing fleets, they're all lining up to come here to exploit one of the last wilderness regions that we have left on Earth. The sea ice really is crucial habitat for most of the Arctic species. So if the sea ice goes, they go. It's time for us to step up and to stop this and to really make sure that the Arctic is kept free from all this destructive industrial activity. From the Arctic to central Italy, where nearly 300 people were killed in a 6.2 magnitude earthquake. The picturesque town of Armatitre was hit hardest. This town was the epicenter of the damages. While we were there filming, we caught an aftershock. Experience for yourself what it feels like to stand inside a fallen building while the ground shakes underneath. The relief efforts are still ongoing and the surrounding cities will take years to rebuild. Visit HuffPost Riot to find ways that you can help. Thanks for joining us at The Big Picture. I hope you enjoyed becoming the story. Stay tuned for the next episode. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>